All right, Tim, this is Full Throttle, a game you designed. And first of all, just let, let's start about the game. What, what, what are you doing Full Throttle? What kind of game is it? Uh, you play a biker named Ben, and you uh, take on his personality. And um, it's a, a graphic adventure where he uh, he's on the run for a crime he didn't commit, and the law's chasing him, and a, a, a murderer happens, and the real killer... After the day of the tentacle, they asked to, Dave and I to come up with new game that. ideas. And I was, we're kind of like, oh, God, we need to come up with some new game ideas quick. I actually didn't know what to do next. And uh, one of our animators, his friend came over and she was talking about what she did that summer and how she'd spent it in Alaska. And she hung around a lot at this biker bar where these guys named Smiling Rick or Big Phil. Big Rick and Smiling Phil. Or Big Phil and Smiling Rick. Big Rick and Smiling Phil. She hung out and they would just do donuts in the muddy parking lot and talk about going to Sturgis. I was like, what's Sturgis? I was thinking how these guys sounded like pirates, kind of like pirates and cowboys. They sounded like they were living this fantasy world outside of modern society that had its own rules. And I thought that would be a great setting for a game. Kind of like pirates. Pirates? I mean bikers. And I've told that one before. Am I telling the same stories over and over again? We were trying to do a, a biker game just because the games have been done before. It was either, you know, there's, it's always science fiction or yeah, fantasy, right, medieval, right. and just no one had really touched, uh, you know, the wild one or uh, yeah. Easy Rider. And, and computers and Harleys, they go together more than, you know, people would think. Uh, management was very worried because they were like, are they going to be driving around selling drugs and killing people and stuff? And I was like, no, those are fun bikers. These are just, they, they just love to ride. Did Lucas uh, have more trust in you, having delivered a hit title previously? Uh, no, they didn't think of Dead Nichols a hit. Uh, in the old days, it felt like there was a kind of a ceiling as far as you couldn't break through with adventure games um, to, to that wider audience. Because games had broken through in first-person shooters and, and console platformers had broken past that. But adventure games seemed to be in this kind of 200,000 people range. And it was like, how do we break past that? And we were always trying to think of, you know, is it they want more action in the game or do they want less dialogue or do they want a different interface or we'd be guessing at all these things and we were always trying to experiment with different things and uh, Full Throttle definitely went more cinematic, had an action main character. When I'm on the road, I'm indestructible. No one can stop me. Yeah, Ben Throttle was inspired a lot by both uh, Toshiro Mufuni's character in Yojimbo and uh, Mad Max and The Road Warrior, um, those two movies. And they both had this kind of stoic main character who was obviously a capable, strong individual, but not uh, pushing that on people. Just kind of like wants to be left alone, but is constantly being, you know, pushed in situations where he has to um, show that he can demolish everybody around. But I always thought there was some relationship between those two characters. And then uh, one day I, I ordered the original screenplay for Mad Max, and the first scene of it in the screenplay had him um, coming to a fork in the road, and he parked and he, he went up to this old wreck and he pulled the bumper off and he threw it in the air, and whichever way the bumper ended up pointing, that's the way he drives off. And that's the same way that Yojimbo starts with him doing it with a stick when he's walking down the path. I was like, I knew it. I knew it was all the same character. Should have done that at the beginning of Full Throttle. My Ben book, my big book of Ben. This, this is like the story document. A puzzle outline. This is the design document basically for the game. Guys, makes me think of White Zombie. I was just playing White Zombie constantly while I was listening to this. This is a pretty ambitious game. Like I feel like at, on, on every level we were just like, we got in way over our heads. <laughs> we wanted to have full screen animation, but also Larry had this uh, idea about doing a lot of cuts to close ups because if you cut to a close up, you save on animation. Like having a guy run into a room is really expensive to animate all these joints and stuff. Um, but if you do a close up of, of somebody turning and looking and hearing footsteps, and then you try to cut to another close up of someone coming into the frame, like it, you're like telling the story of someone entering the room, only moving like a few things. If we edit enough, no one shot will have 
that much animation in it. <laughs> you know, just as the animation's getting complicated, cut to another angle, you know. But still, the scene was going to last X amount of frames long. It's like somewhere in there, you're going to have to animate something. And I remember Darren Stinnett, the project leader of um, Dark Forces, who at the time, he just like, well, I saw your demos. I had no idea you guys were pushing it that far. And I was like, are we? I had no idea. Are we pushing it that far? Because we were so deep into it, we didn't realize. I think when the company saw that first demo, they're like, ooh, this could be cool. It's got some music and it's exciting. And um, they really, they got behind it at that point. You could feel kind of excitement building as the game was getting closer to launch. And when it launched, it was like a big hit. And it was a period where LucasArts was having a lot of hits, like uh, TIE Fighter had done really well, and um, Dark Forces, and, um, and then Full Throttle. And Full Throttle sold like a million units, which is never, we'd never done that at that point with the adventure games. And it felt like we had um, reached a lot of new people with the game. I feel like it helps to have a big explosion on the front of the box. I've always had that theory. It's a guy doing a wheelie, big explosion. They asked me if I wanted to do a sequel, and I was like, I'm already thinking about this Day of the Dead thing. It's going to be great. You're going to love it. And they're like, OK. And I think it was the, the fact that um, that Throttle had done well, they kind of gave me a little benefit of the doubt when I said I want to make a game about skeletons. They're like, oh, OK. Um, how many explosions are going to be on the cover? Yeah. All the uh, uh, awesome remastered features you've come to expect, plus a complete unaltered original, and is in there too. It's one of our biggest announcements since. Uh, uh, well, one of the fun things about the remasters is the reunion of the team. Like, we had the team come down and do the um, uh, commentary. It's like a lot of people I haven't seen in years. And so it's fun to get together and share the stories. Everybody remembers different stories than, than I do. Something came up, and I had to find Tim and bring him back because there was a bug that had to be fixed and we had to ship this game. And so all I knew was that Tim had gone to play pool in San Francisco. And I called every pool hall in San Francisco looking for him. This makes me sound like a totally different person than I, I am. <laughs> <laughs> but he wasn't, like every in, juke any, joint he wasn't in any of them. <laughs> until finally... Are you kidding me? <laughs> finally, I found him in some bar with a pool table. Oh and uh, it was a kilowatt. When he picked up, when he picked up the bar phone, he was terrified because he was like, "How did you find me?" <laughs> <laughs> and I've been retelling the same stories for so many years. It was great to hear uh, new ones. And I heard this rumble, and I was like, "Wow, what is that?" And it just got louder and louder, and the car started to shake. And then the Hell's Angels. It took forever because we're like, "We can't cut away. It's got to be this epic piece at the end." Wait a minute, guys. I just want to clarify. That sounds good. <laughs> yeah. And we go, yeah, yeah, no, it sounds good. I just wonder who the audience for uh, Full Throttle is, what they turned into, Bikers. what type of gamers yeah, they obviously, are. Obviously, everyone who played Full Throttle in the old days has now become a biker because it made such an impact on them. So they just got to come home, park those bikes, sit down on the computer, and play a game. I always wondered, like, someday I'm going to be the biker bar and I'm going to be surrounded by bikers and they're about to beat me up. And then one of them's like, hey, wait a second. Are you wearing a Corley Motors t-shirt? And then they would be like, that game was too short. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs>